All right, so um, this is the point where you see the scary talk, and at the end, you probably turn your phone off. Um, <laughs> So these guys have presented for us before. They've, uh, they've done some amazing research, uh, very uh, kind of like they did last year, which was a really, really cool talk. I think you guys are in for a real treat. Let's give these guys a big hand. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate that. Oh, there's so many people. So last year, uh, my team have uh, had about uh, three presentations, and uh, we got uh, GPS, GPS spoofing, we got a famous cell, and uh, we also got, you know, the Zigbee. And uh, I'm really happy to stand here right again and, uh, you know, uh, share something. So uh, here's my talk, and uh, uh, this is the R LTE redirection. So people will know about uh, we. Uh, uh, people will know about, uh, you know, LTE is fourth generation, fourth generation, but uh, people think it's more secure and uh, than the two generation and the third generation. So today let's, uh, let's learn how to break it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my name is Hao Qi Shan, and uh, here is my colleague, and uh, his name is Wang Chao. So we come from the Qihu 360 and uh, the unicorn team. Uh, our team are focusing on, you know, several uh, security issues in about, uh, such as wireless system and embedded hardware. hardware. So uh, this, is a to this topic is about LTE network. Uh, it's, uh, we will show you how to force a target LTE cell phone uh, into a specific uh, unsafe network. So, uh, but don't worry, we didn't burn the device, so your phone is still in safe. Uh, so fourth generation network is more advanced than, uh, it's a more advanced mobile network than two second generation and third generation. Uh, but absolutely, it's not absolutely secure. So there are already some papers uh, uh, show how to expose these vulnerabilities of RT networks and uh, one of them has pre one of them is the presentations in the last year, and uh, if you guys had uh, listened to it, it's uh, on the Black Hat Europe. Yeah, so this presentation introduced the LTE uh, MC catcher, and uh, the LTE cell phones tracking and uh, the DOS attack, DOS attack of uh, your LTE cell phone. So uh, let my colleague show you how to break your LT cell phones network and uh, in detail, please. Hello, glad to see you. My name is Wen Zhao. And uh, to start with, let's have a look at the two common attacks against the LT network. The first one is MS Catcher. How does this work? From this picture, we can see the left tower is a real LT network base station, which is controlled by operators. Well, the right one is a fake LT base station, which cover by small, which covers small space. Okay, when the cell phone comes into the area of the fake LT network, it will immediately ask to report it its IMS number by the fake base station. Okay. Well, you know the IMS number stands for the user. Uh, sorry. Well, you know, the IMS number stands for the user identifier, which can trick user locations and movements. This kind of device is mostly used by national security departments to trick criminal suspects. And I also heard that there are some illegal casinos to use it for raising alert when some strangers approach. Well, the other attack is called a denial of service attack. After a fake base station gets the IMS number of its covered cell phone, it can do further attack to cell phone. It can send a reject message such as, you are an illegal cell phone, or there is no available network. Uh, well, when the cell phone gets this kind of message, it usually turns into the no service status for a very long time. What's more, some cell phones can only recover by rebooting, but different kinds of cell phones react in different manners. According to the experiments we have taken, the old iPhones and the majority of Android system cell phones are influenced by their vulnerable elements. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the new attack we have been working on. As the picture shows, there are two fake networks, one in the LTE base station, while the other is a GSM fake base station. When the cell phone approach them, then the, uh, it firstly attach in the malicious LTE base station. Um, then, the, uh, automat uh, then the malicious LTE base station will tell the phone, go to my GSM network. Okay, the cell phone has to follow its command and enters into the malicious GSM network. Well, when the cell phone enters um, the malicious GSM network, the malicious GSM network, the attackers could do further attacks, such as eavesdropping on conversations, intercepting the SMS, or analyzing data traffic. Here is the demonstration platform we developed to verify the redirection attack. There are two computers with USRPs. The right one is a mini desktop computer with an USRP B210, and it runs an open LTE program, and uh, create a fake LTE network. Well, the left one is an Apple Mac laptop with an USRP B200 mini, running the open BTS program. Okay, let's show the video. It's dumped up the video, so we can put it in our PowerPoint. So let me play it for you. All right. It lasts only one minute. It's just one minute. Yeah. OK. okay. It, you know, the LTE. Uh, the cell phone from the real 4G network to the fake 4G network to uh, and then down to the GSM network at a, is a faster procedure. So it's uh, very difficult to show this variation. Uh, pay attention to this short video. It lasts only one minute. Okay, now let's check the computer with the 2G fake network. Okay, we can see the AIMS number from the fake network. Now. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay, in this video, we utilize the OpenBTS to build a fake network, which means the cell phone can't connect to the internet. In other words, it loses connection to the real world. But um, the fake networks still can do some malicious attack, such as making a call or sending SMS with any calling numbers. Okay, besides, there is a more advanced attack. Um, this attack utilizes open uh, the femtocell. Yeah, a rogue network, as the picture shows. This is uh, already hacked by our team. Uh, this is the femtocell, and it was already hacked by our team. Last year, my partner Hao Qi has gave a presentation about how to hack this femtocell. Uh, and, uh, and you know, the femtocell can connect to the operator's real network, uh, but it can also controlled by attackers then the attacker can eavesdrop all the traffic, including voice and data. Such rogue femtocell can be 2G or even 3G. Okay, let's, uh, now let's go further into the protocol to see how this attack is uh, realized. Here is the LTE basic procedure. Um, when cell phone is powered on, it firstly asserts, asserts the cells around, around it and choose the cell with uh, with strong signal to attach. In this case, the cell phone will initiate an RRC connection. Over this connection, the cell phone will send the attach request message to start authentication. Okay, when the authentication procedure finish, the RRC connection will enter a status um, with the secure, uh, will enter the 
uh, will enter the status. Okay. Enter status with integrity and serving protection. In other words, the busy station and the cell phone will establish a security network service. But before this step, all the messages are not encrypted. So this unauthorized part is the attack space. Yeah, the balloon signaling. Let's see how to realize AIMS catcher from the signaling process value. Now we presume our, uh, the phone is staying in the operator's network, then we set up a fake network around it. Then it find a better cell, the fake cell, and uh, try to connect to it. To avoid easily, easily exposing the cell phone itself, it will not directly send the AIMS number, but uh, send a tricking error update request with the Teams number. The Teams number stands for the temporary mobile subscriber identity, which is decided by base station. If this is a normal cell re a reselection procedure in normal network, then the base station should know the Teams number and then complete tricking error updating. But obviously, a uh, fake LTE base station doesn't know the cell phone's identity, so it sends back a tricking error update reject message. At the same time, this message will carry the reason why network refuse cell phone's request. There are many kinds of causes for refusal, and each cause has a number. If we send the cause number 9 to cell phone, which is dis uh, described in the specification, UE identity can't be driven by the network, then the cell phone will initiate the attach procedure by sending an uh, attach request. This message contains information what the attacker wants, yes, the AIMS number. We already know that there are many kinds of causes for refusal. Well, when we get, when we get the AIMS number, we can do further attack to throw the next message. In this case, we can send attach reject with some special causes. Here are several, uh, here are several causes for typical DOS attack. Number three, number seven, number eight, and number 14. Cost number three means illegal UE. Cost number seven means EPS service are not allowed it. Well, cost number eight means EPS service and non-EPS service are not allowed it. Cost number 14 means EPS service are not allowed it in this PRMN. All of these causes may lead the cell phone to shut down their modem and to keep off for a very long time. Okay, the third attack, RRC redirection, follows the attack reject message. From this picture, we can see the red words, yeah. Mm, the malicious network send an RRC connection release message additionally. Uh, well, the release message could carry extension information called redirection, cre uh, redirection creator info. The redirected creator can be any type of network, 4G, 3G, or 2G. So we could redirect a target cell phone into 2G or 3G network and redirect other cell phone into the neighboring 4G network. Well, someone may argue that you just downgrade the cell phone into an unsafe uh, network uh, to 2G or 3G or 2G, but the po um, we could use jamming tool as well and it's much easier than encoding. Yes, jamming tool can also let uh, 4G network unworkable and downgrade cell phone into 3G or 2G. But the point is, in this manner, the, it will influence all cell phones. That's why we claim that our, um, uh, that's why we claim that the redirection attack could accurately attack the target cell phone and do not influence any other cell phone. They can still keep in the 4G network and don't need to worry about rewarding information. Okay, after knowing about the principle of, the, of this attack, let's uh, talk about the method to build a set of demo system to verify this attack. Well, here is the test platform. We use the common tool, USRP plus a computer. The model of the USRP is B210, uh, B210, yeah. The computer is gigabyte and uh, is small enough to hide itself. 
There are several open source LT projects. Well, I think these two projects are most uh, popular. The first one is Open Air Interface, um, developed by Eurocore. This is the most uh, complicated. This is the most uh, completed open source LT project, and it has been developed uh, for many years. What's more, it provides the um, Mm, it provides a connection between the real cell phone and the uh, internet. But the OAS system refers to a very complicated software architecture. So there's a little difficult to modify its source code. Well, the second project is named OpenLTE, written by only one person, Ben. He was a Motorola engineer and joined the Google project long in last year. Boon gives this project a, on a very beautiful coding style, so it's quite easy to understand the whole architecture and to extend its function. That's why it has a more popular situation in open uh, in security research. However, the shortcoming of this project is uh, it hasn't achieved a, sta a stable LT data connection. Uh, but for our experiments, the functionality is enough yeah, to build a fake LTE network. I wrote, a I wrote a few slides to give the TP and open LTE source code. Uh, if you want to build a fake LTE network, just look at these signalings. Let's see the signalings again. In IMS catcher, we need to send tricking error update reject message with special calls. Yeah, in current open LT software, the TAU request isn't handled. You can see the line, not handling tricking error update request. Luckily, we found a TAU, the TAU reject message packing function is ready. So in this part, we can see this, uh, this part, MME, MME pack tracking error update reject message. So what we need to do is just adding some calls to handle TAU keys, keys with this function. Okay. Just uh, like the principle. Okay, when receiving the TAU request from cell phone, we should firstly set the MME procedure as TAU request. Then what we need to do is just uh, writing a function to call a TAU reject message. Mm. Yeah, when writing this TAU rejective function, you can refer to the attach rejective function. It was already too. Then how about DOS attack? We can directly use the, this function, send attach reject. As you see the highlighted line, you can set your rejective causes here. Yeah. In the next message, we can do further attack. Send, uh, sending attach reject with some special causes. Here, uh, okay. And the third case is the RRC redirection. Um, this is a little complicated. You have to read the specification to know the message format and insert the redirect clear info into RRC connection release message. From the red circle, uh, we can see we return one to this function. Yeah, it is because here, yeah, this part is a 3GPP protocol about RRC connection release message. We can see the top layer of this message. Yeah, the red line, the redirected clear info choice is optional. So in this case, we just need to um, open this, uh, open this, uh, choice and uh, set one in this bit, then we can modify the last code in, in this manner. Okay, that's all the method we need to modify. Now it's how this time, let's, let him introduce why we do this. Okay. Okay, this, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this picture is a cell phone screenshot and this uh, the cell phone has logging capability, and uh, I use it to check whether it uh, really received my redirection info. So yes, it did receive. Uh, the clear info is a GIN. 
Yeah, it means GSM network. It, it uh, and its ARFCN frequency number is 14.2. Then the cell phone will firstly search this frequency. Mm, yeah, so, um, so these are almost all the uh, source code you need to modify if you want to build a tech tool, quite simple, right? Now it's Hochi's time. Let me introduce why we do this. Okay. All right. Thanks to my colleagues, great work. And she actually she did most of the job. Yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so actually, we are our team's not a team that's has very strong attack abilities. Uh, we often said we, you know, lack of imagination of doing some bad things. We just to find the vulnerabilities, but uh, we don't know how to use it. <laughs> uh, we prefer to be a defender. So uh, we tell ourselves that, you know, from this presentation, and uh, we will emphasize not only the risk of the vulnerabilities of your. Uh, I just said LTE network, uh, you know, from the attacker's side. Uh, but also think about the background. So the reasons uh, why these vulnerabilities exist. So our question is, um, why is the uh, WRC redirection message not encrypted? I, say, I suppose uh, some of you will think of the same question. Uh, first question is, is this really a new problem? Uh, we consult with uh, several, you know, Huawei security. Uh, it's a really large company in China. Uh, and the 3GPP standard experts. So surprisingly, uh, she found she's finding is not a new. And the 3GPP knows the uh, risk about 10 years ago, really 10 years ago. So here is a document in generally, uh, in general, uh, 20, yeah, 26, 26 years, so which introduced a false handover attack. So let's see this paragraph. I don't know, uh, yeah, you can see it clearly. Uh, so this compromise, the base station can be, can be in it, uh, reconnect, uh, reconfiguration uh, procedure to the UE, directing it to a cell or network chosen by the attacker. So this could be, this could function as a denial of device, you know, if the target network cannot or will not offer to the UE device or to allow a uh, chosen network to capture UES. So this document, this document uh, raised this problem I just mentioned before. Uh, and then about 10 months later, so in November and 26, the 3 GPPs made a decision. So let us read the two key points in this decision, and the point one is, you know, the WRC is integrated and the ciphering will be started only once, just once, during the attach, attach procedure. And uh, for example, uh, after the AKA has, been, AKA has been performed. So it cannot be deactivated later. And the point two is the WRC integrity and the suffering algorithm can only be changed in the case, you know, of the E no, uh, node B handover. So you see here, three GPPs, they give an expression on the WRC suffering. And uh, here is a question, why they did this? So, you know, because some special, in some special case, uh, such as earthquake or during hot event, uh, there will be too many cell phones trying to access one, just one best uh, stations. The max, these best stations will be overloaded. So to let a network load, you know, balanced, so this base station can ask the new coming cell phone to redirect to the un another best station. Uh, if we don't, if you don't tell the cell phone, you know, which best station is light loaded. The cell phone will, the cell phone will might, might uh, blindly and uh, ineffectively uh, to search one by one. This causes a lot of powers. So finally increase uh, the whole network uh, loaded. So 3GPPs, they think the new best station should take the responsibility to, uh, 
you know, to all the cell phone. Uh, so they decide to encrypt, uh, they decide not to encrypt the WRC reduction procedure. So I explained, just explained the background reason of this three attack here and the uh, MC catcher, they cannot avoid, avoid, be avoided because we need a global money and uh, you have to firstly show you identify and uh, then to do the auth. So Wi-Fi secure system, you know, they have the similar uh, situation. We all know that you know the MAC address, the MAC address people can use it to to, uh, uh, to track you. Yeah. So from iOS 8 and uh, Windows 10, so there will be some you know MAC randomization, and uh, th this method that it will be used. Mm, but actually, you know, to factorize the network manager uh, management. A random MAC address only enabled in a strict uh, con condition. Yeah, strict condition. So, if a terminal use Wi-Fi hotspot such as uh, 2.0, yeah, uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot 2.0 is a specific specification for the Wi-Fi roaming. So, in that case, this MAC uh, randomization will also be disabled. That's that's a little bit a uh, little bit. So global roaming and identify and identity privacy is conflict and uh, it's need to shut off. Uh, DOS attack and uh, you know the battery energy saving and uh, saving is another shut off. Suppose this network is really really un unusable and uh, so if you if this cell phone keeps searching the network, it will consume. Too much energies uh, and uh, quickly come, uh, quickly consume out. So this is also a bad thing. Uh, as you can see, this network protocol designer they have to make many many trade off between the basic connection requirement and the high level requirement. The privacy, the privacy is what we care about. So I gave the excuse of these vulnerabilities. Uh, I believe people should. So do not mean I refuse to fix this problem. So let's find out how to fix this. In this slide, uh, let's discuss this, uh, yeah, uh, let's discuss this countermeasures. Uh, so firstly, uh, at the cell phone manufacturer side, uh, since you know the standard and the modern uh, chipsets haven't fixed this problem, so what, we can, what they can do, for example, uh, is uh, such as, yeah, don't follow the reduction command, but also auto search the other available the best station. Or you can say, cell phone can follow the reduction command, but you should give your users some alert, uh, such as warning, you are downgraded and to the lower security network. But I think it's really hard work. <laughs> So we know about the root of this problem uh, is the unsafe GSM network. So why don't we try to solve this problem? And the GSM network is still needed uh, by the operators. You know, there's a lot of device you need to just support the GSM network. So uh, you want to change it, it needs a long time. So from the standard side, they are making effort to fit you know, the weak point of the GSM network. Uh, so here is a very fresh news. Just a couple months ago, 3GPP received a proposal of the GSMA. Uh, so the basic idea of the upgrade, uh, the mobile device security capability, and uh, since you know the older net uh, GSM network equipment, we we cannot, or you can say, difficult to upgrade it. So GSMA, you, they propose two methods. One is a mobile t uh, device, you know, they refuse one, one way off, and uh, if they uh, visit a network, it's 3G capable. And the second method is, you know, dis disable some weak encryption, such as the A1, uh, A51, yeah, A51 algorithm in mobile. So, let's show. Yeah, here it is. Um, so these two proposals haven't finally, you know, standardized by the 3GPP because.
because uh, it's you, you want big, you want it bigger standard is really hard and uh, not quite easy. So, but we see a good beginning is someone trying to fix this situation, and uh, okay, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, we uh, show you how show you how to break and show you how to fix this problem, and uh, we did it both way. But uh, uh, I think there are some you know some cell phone man manufacturers can learn something from this presentation, and I hope so. So here is our presentation today, and uh, we thank so many companies give us a, a lot of help, such as Huawei and uh, Qualcomm and uh, Apple. Yeah, Apple. So uh, if you have any questions about how to, you know, how to build your own LT networks, that uh, or some malicious and say, or you can say un unsafe network, so please feel free to contact us, and uh, you're welcome to take a picture. Thank you.